Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another lighting adventure, Ray of Light episode five. Let's start it off with a brand new compact 200 watt light I just got. But wait, why am I grabbing the Zion case? Isn't that a gimbal company? Well, they recently started making powerhouse lights and this is my second one in the Mollus series. This is the G200 with a full size Bowens mount, metal light stand mount, and my first impressions are good with this rubber strap to hold the ballast and the new lantern modifier is really nice too. All of this snaps into place. We can pop it on our rolling stand and head upstairs. Sometimes I need portability as well as high power output. All right, so we are doing our first scene here. I'm gonna be using the Mollus G200 to do this shoe and we're gonna go over a ton of things in this video. So let's go. Welcome back to another episode of Ray of Light. I'm Ray and this series is all about lighting gear tips and tutorials. So if that's something that you're interested in, hey, stick around and subscribe. But what I have here is the new Zion Mollus G200. It's a 200 watt light that you can actually boost up to 300 watts just by holding these two buttons. And boom, now you have a 300 watt light. Yep, I said Zion, like the gimbal company. Well, they're making these really small, powerful, compact lights now, like this Mollus G200 and this tiny little Mollus X100. And they are actually really, really innovative with the way that they're doing the fans and the cooling. There's really not much other room other than the fan. And that is what dissipates this heat through this nice cooling system. But whew, man, am I the only one that's getting hot in here? All right, so I'll list everything on the screen now that we're gonna go over in this video if you wanna jump around to a specific part or a specific test. But all right, let's go ahead and jump into the first thing, which is what you get in the case. The Mollus G200 does come with a really nice case and this is branded on the front and it comes with a nice soft padded handle. It's roughly double the size of their 100 watt light, but that's expected because this is double the power, actually even triple. You have everything all tucked in here precisely. You have the hyper reflector. Everything else is held in through Velcro straps, including this power ballast right here. And you also have the power cable that goes up to the light. And then you have the power cable that goes to the wall to the ballast. And you have the Mollus G200 light fixture itself and it has a nice little plastic case that covers the chip. Everything fits all nice and compactly in here, but there is no room for error so you have to use these Velcro straps to keep everything in place. The light sets up pretty quickly and all you have to do is get it on a stand, plug in the ballast and you're ready to go. And then you can put whatever modifier you want on it. Like this is the Zion Lantern that we're gonna talk about a little bit later. Or you can put the hyper reflector on it or just go with no modifier at all. Out of the box, the color accuracy ratings are really high, 97 TLCI and a 95 CRI. So naturally we're gonna have to test it out with a CCT meter on a bullseye in a pitch black garage. And I was actually shocked. It was nearly perfect with only about 100 degrees or less off of each temperature until it reached about 6,500 Kelvin. Pause the video here for my full results. Now let's test the output against other lights with a large softbox. At 50%, the G200 is easily more powerful than my Godox SL60W. The Colbar CL60 RGB light looks a little bit better and brighter. So now let's bump it up to a Pseudophoto P100 RGB light and this output looks comparable to half power of the G200. So let's switch to the Zion Mollus X100 and this output is almost spot on as well as the color. But just a reminder that the G200 can output another 50% which would look like this. Now another 200 watt Amaran light doesn't look quite as bright but it is definitely more than what you need for this setup. So I'm sure the question is gonna arise whether or not you can use this Mollus G200 outdoors. Well, today is a nice cloudy day and this is what the shot looks like before. And this is what it looks like with the Mollus G200 and the hyper reflector. 
At this point, you can enable the 320 watt max boost mode and fill in extra shadows underneath the eyes and nose. But keep in mind that this light is not weather resistant, so make sure you don't get it wet. Alternatively, you could use the lantern outdoors as well, and that just really softens the look and gives you more of an overall fill. As you can see, the shadow behind me fades away as well. For power options, you are limited to the power ballast that the kit comes with, and this ballast has to be plugged into a wall socket, so there is no battery power option or USB-C power at the time of making this video, so I was plugging in the ballast to a wall socket on this EcoFlow generator. So if it has to be plugged in, I guess the cable length is pretty important. So let's check it out. So I have the ballast on the ground and the cable length is pretty good. You have six feet from the ballast to the light. So you can send this light up nice and high on your stand. And then from the ballast to the wall plug, you have an additional nine feet of cable. So you have over 15 feet of cable. So the cable length is pretty solid. I would say they did a good job on thinking that through. All right, so let's go over how to use the Mollus G200. So you have this nice silicone rubbery band that you can hang on the light stand and then you control all of your functions through the power ballast down below and then you can send your light up on the stand. So you have the power switch on the top, which I like that it's not a press the hold button, it's just a, a switch. So I like the you know more robust you know mechanical function of a, a switch rather than a push button. But you do have some push button functions on here. So this is your CCT and your intensity. So you know basically your color balance, whether you want to go to 2700 Kelvin, which is very warm, all the way up to 6500 Kelvin, which is a very cool tone. And basically you have these two dials here that serve as your buttons as well. Now, if you single press the CCT button, it jumps between increments of different warm or cool temperatures starting with 2700 Kelvin. So you just hold down this CCT button and that's how you enter music mode. So it'll basically flash based off of the beat of the music or your voice. So let me get out of that before we, you know, cause problems here. So now for the dim button, you can jump between different increments of 20% on your brightness, all the way up to back to zero. Now with the dim control, you can turn the knob, of course, just like on the CCT and dial it in manually, or you can single tap it to jump between different increments of 20%. And then if you triple tap the dim button, you reset the Bluetooth. Because there is also the Zion Vega app for controlling this light and you can dial in a lot more features on the app than you can do here on the ballast. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Zion Vega app. In the ZY Vega app, you can adjust your brightness with a slider. Same thing with your color temperature or CCT or you can jump between different presets and tons of different colored gels on the second page. Of course, you can turn the light off and on. And then on the third page, there is a color match tool that you use your camera to match colors with. And then on the main screen, you can enable max boost mode, which will bump you up to 320 watts. And then this is a little light identifier if you happen to have a bunch of lights and wanna know which one you're controlling. The light stand mount is attached to the light at all times and it is metal construction so it's nice and durable. Drops right on the baby pin just like that. Has a little tightening knob on this side for locking in the light to the stand. And then you can control the tilt with the second knob here and you can tilt all the way down and all the way up. And then you do have an umbrella holder here on the light mount as well. So you're able to use your traditional like photography umbrellas. So overall, I would say this is a very nice sturdy quality light stand mount. So now let's test out how strong it is with a big 90 centimeter softbox and give it a good shake. So we put it on a C stand, give it a nice little shake and then a nice little bounce test and see if we can get the grip to slip, but it held solid the entire time. 
The Mollus G200 has a Bowens mount on it, which is the connector on the front of the light where you're able to click in different lighting modifiers like this hyper reflector, or they are actually creating their own lighting modifiers from Zion. This is the lantern from Zion. So it comes in this nice big pouch. So this is that Bowens mount adapter on the front that'll click into the light. So it's much easier to assemble this on the floor when you're looking down inside of it because what you're gonna do is you attach the bar in the side to the little clip on the bottom. So you just hold on, give it a little click, and then put your Velcro you know, back over those light leaks there. So everything's all perfectly closed up, no light leaks. The light also comes with four of these skirt attachments and you attach these with Velcro on the sides of the light. There are little Velcro patches right here on the sides. So they have two different sides. There is a shinier part, which is more reflective. And then the black part is more of the flag and directs the light or blocks the light. So you attach the Velcro with the little latches on the top and bottom. But ideally, you would probably want to use these flags whenever you have the lantern modifier up on a boom arm and this would block off light like you see how we're not spilling any light on the wall back there. You can see here how the lantern gives you a much wider spread. The back of the room is filled up in this shot here compared to a parabolic softbox. Now we're gonna test out the fan noise and we're gonna do that with this boom mic that is about six inches away from the light, just barely out of frame here. And this light is at 100% brightness right now. So I'm gonna give a moment of silence and then I'm gonna click it over to max boost mode and then you can hear the fan kick in from there. So here we go. One other thing to note is that there is also a fan inside the ballast, which is very, very quiet, but that is one thing to note that you, you know, obviously can't get either one of these components wet. So the fan noise doesn't bother me personally. The light wouldn't be this close to my subjects and the fan wouldn't be facing them either. It'd be facing the opposite way with the softbox on this side. But just note that if you use that max boost mode that the noise decibels are gonna go up a little bit because that fan is gonna have to spin even faster to accommodate for that extra heat. But we also need to look at some of the negatives as well. And one would be that the power supply is quite large. It's actually about the same size as the light. Actually, the light is just a little bit smaller than the power ballast. So, you know, this is another thing. You're looking at this small, compact, tiny light, but then you also have you know, another component to it that adds to the weight and the bulk and the size and everything. So here we have it, the Mollus G200, super powerful compact lighting setup from Zion. So they're actually innovating the lighting industry by creating such powerhouses in these little compact bodies. So I think it's really, really interesting to see where this is heading in the future with other companies that are gonna wanna keep up with this small form factor. So who's next to jump on board and create something to top this? I guess we'll have to find out in a future episode of Ray of Light. Take care, see you then.